So if you have a series of else, if structures over and over again, repeated in an if, then you might be better off just using a switch statement. The nice thing about a switch is that it evaluates the expression only once at the top of the switch, and then it will execute the first matching case that it finds. So the structure of a switch is basically an expression at the top, and then a series of cases which represent valid responses or results or evaluations of that expression. Now, you've probably seen switches before in C, C++, Java, and the C++ switch behaves pretty much the same, but there is one little difference here. A C++ switch will result in a compile error if it's allowed to fall through from one case to another when that case is not empty. So if you have a case that has implementation, it's not allowed to fall into the next case. You must provide some sort of mechanism to prevent that fall through. Now that can either be a break, a return, you could throw an exception. You could actually use a go-to here if you wanted as well, although that's usually not preferred. So the basic structure of a switch statement looks like this. In this example, we're evaluating x, the expression. The first case is case 1. 1 would be the value of that expression. If x equals 1, then case 1 will execute. What we're doing in case 1 is we're assigning 1 to the variable y. And then we do a break. We have to throw that break in there because since case 1 is not an empty case, without the break, it would fall into the default case, which is not allowed in C sharp. The default case provides a basically case else. Any time that you have no matching cases in the case structure above, then the default case will execute. So if x equals anything other than 1, then you would get an execution of the default case. In this example, we're going to pass the value of x, an integer equal to 1, into a switch and see what the results are. We have a method here called call switch that accepts an integer argument. What we're going to do is do a switch on that argument and find out what the results are after the processing. Now, if we take a look at the switch, what we'll notice is that I have a switch here that will cause an error. The reason why is because I have case 1. Case 1 is not empty, yet case 1 provides no break before the end of the case. Therefore, it violates the rule of having a non-empty case that allow, that with a follow-through to the next case below. Let's go ahead and execute this and see our results. Well, notice that we get this caught basically at the compiler level. If we look at the error, we're informed that control cannot fall through from one case into another. So let's prevent this error from happening by adding a break statement at the end of that case. Now the case will break after the conclusion of the case and will not fall through into the next case below. Let's try this again. In this example, it executes successfully, and we're told that the value of y is equal to 1 because the code inside the first case does execute. So this is basically how a switch works evaluate the current value of the expression, evaluate it once, and then execute the first matching case.